Good morning and welcome to this live stream in which I'm going to be explaining and introducing this single page document which is five key steps to expert primary maths teaching age four to five which in England is reception class in Scotland is P1 um, in the US you're looking at pre-kindergarten so I've put this together because and it's the first in a series because most people, when they're telling you how to teach a year, that you they start with this enormous lesson by lesson uh, Bible of how to do it. And how do you distill that down to the essence of it? And the answer is often you can't because the people who've written it don't actually know. Whereas these days, if you know the absolute essence of what you're doing, it's really easy to say, oh, I want something on the partitioning of the number seven and just post a question on Facebook and people give you loads of ideas. So it makes much more sense to build from the inside out. And the reason that's not done so much now is because in England, we got this new primary maths curriculum in 2014 that hadn't been consulted, shoved everything very young, was just a fetish of one minister and nobody actually knew how to do it. So everyone's been sort of fudging it ever since, but I've been working with the teachers who always knew how to do it to capture what it is. So five key steps to getting this right. And I'm assuming that none of your children have had any maths education before when they start in this year. So absolute number one is in the first few weeks, make sure un children understand cardinal number and this is something that teachers really often miss what it is is that the number four if we take the number four as an example the number four could be that single bead or it could be any group of four things and children are often confused they think i am four but that the way in which they're four is they're four years old which is the fourth in a series so because the idea of cardinal number, of number being a group of objects is so obvious to us, we d often don't realise that it isn't to children. And there's children who haven't got it. If you're flying ahead with teaching number and they have not got that, they're gonna miss everything. So it's what you've got to sort out. And you sort it out using a test. You send children to get one, two, three, four objects from a larger group. And you need to test each child on whether they're doing that securely or not. Can they get four things from a large group of things? If they can, big tick on that child, focus in on the children you're not so sure about during those first few weeks and check out every single one. And there's a link here to a video that goes into it in much more detail and explains the kind of interventions you should be doing if that's an issue for any of the children you're working with. It tends to be more of an issue in the areas where a lot of children haven't been stimulated, areas of substantial deprivation. But then what happens in, in the areas of privilege, you do sometimes get a child who just hasn't got it for no apparent reason. They've been really well stimulated and the teachers don't spot them because they're not used to spotting them as the teachers in the more challenged areas are. And that leads them to conclude that that child is just bad at maths. Whereas in fact, it's a specific teaching thing that that teacher should have known and should have got right. So that's number one. Number two is that children have to become really spatially coordinated. They have to be able to cross the midline. Now in traditional texts on early years teaching, you, they really emphasize doing lots of work on getting children to move and balance and on prepositions where are things behind, in front of, beside. But now we've gone on to a more neurological understanding of this. And that's explained in this book here, The Maze of Learning, which I can't recommend highly enough. And it's all about getting children doing lots of exercises like snow angels that are going to specifically coordinate their sensory, sensory inputs and make them develop their understanding of where they are in space. Because children are not going to be able to learn math securely in the abstract until they've got that. They're not going to be able to internalise the maths and manipulate it. So we're going to teach them in other ways, in more concrete ways at this age but we need to be developing their capacity to learn in the ways that teachers of older children are going to expect. So that's essential. And there's two videos here. One is on 
They're both linked in this document. One is on the motor sensory integration and it talks about that. And the other is the, on the standard teaching of the obvious things in the curriculum like direction and uh, in front of, behind and so on. Hi, if you've got any questions, please just post them or say hi and I'll get to them shortly. The third step is the absolute careful, deliberate teaching of the numbers to 10, one at a time. So I've said there are, in the way I explain it, there are 10 aspects of each number. And again, there are some videos that link to that go into this in tremendous depth. Um, this is a slide from one of the videos that goes through what they are. So number one is being able to count that many objects from a larger set. For the small numbers, you want to subitize, that's instantly recognize those numbers. For the, as you get to large numbers like seven, it's about recognizing them as fives and extras, whether you're doing that with fingers and toes or with 10 frames, it's the, that instant recognition. Um, the number three is being, able, is being able to represent the number if, the t if your teacher says it, being able to say the number. So if you count some things, can they name that number? If you, um, making sure they can decode it orally. So if you're naming the number verbally, do they understand what you're saying? Drawing the digit, reading the digit, exploring their own meaning and connecting together all that understanding of a specific number, one to 10. Um, one more and one less. And uh, we move, yeah, we can start to move on to writing the number, but that's not so crucial. Uh, yeah, so drawing the digit is there. And I go into the resources we can use to teach children to do that. And partitioning the number. They need to know the partitions and complements of each number. So they're working on number seven. They need to know it partitions into five and two and six and one and so on. And if you know, say I'm partitioning seven and one part is six, they need to be able to puzzle out the other part. So there's a heck of a lot in every single number that has to be taught in tremendous detail. So if a parent comes to you, it's really common and say, oh, my child knows the numbers to 100 and they can reel them off. You can explain to them precisely why they still need to do a lot of work on the numbers to 10. Number four is going beyond that into the numbers 11 to 20. Now, if you've got a class of children who've been taught together for the previous year, that's nursery in England or just age three to four, whatever that is, they may well have already established the um, cardinal nature of number and have done a lot of work on the number to one to 10. So you may be able to fly on the, to the numbers to 20. You have to treat them with caution. Do what you can with them that doesn't compromise your teaching of the numbers to 10. The no teaching of the numbers to 10 is crucial. And you can play around with the numbers 11 to 20 in ways that don't compromise that, that only enhance it. Some teachers will just introduce them and get children some exposure in counter to 10 and then flashing 10 into their feet and carrying on um, counting children. Often in reception class, the, every morning, the teacher will count the class and that gives the class a lot of exposure to those numbers, often up to 30. That's gonna be useful to them. Counting down and so on can be added in as daily routines that are gonna get children familiar with those number names that don't compromise that core teaching of the numbers to 10. And as I say, some classes will be ready to go on to higher numbers, but don't compromise your teaching of the numbers to 10. So in these videos on the higher numbers, they're there in tremendous detail for those classes that are ready to move on, but select what you feel is appropriate from your class from those. And finally, on measure, shape and fractions, it's all about doing multisensorial work in context to develop children's understanding of the domain of maths and the vocabulary and build their confidence in having pictures in their heads of what's going on when you talk about this stuff. The little bonus recommendation in on this sheet here, it's not essential, but number blocks and number jacks are just wonderful and they're free on YouTube. So when your class are really tired at the end of the day, maybe you've got older children in the class as well. They love these too. Just stick them on, they get an awful lot from them. And you may want to use them in your core teaching too. So 
this five point guide, if you build out from this, you're going to fly because this teaches you the core of expert teaching for this age group straight away. If you're in a country where you don't start formal teaching until seven, just take what you want from this. You're so lucky. It's so much better. Um, I would certainly work on the motor sensory integration. I would certainly work on the cardinality of number and do some work on the numbers 10 and some work on the fraction, shape, measure, exploring all of that in context. And that's it really. Hi, is anyone going to say hi or have you got any questions? If not, I am going to finish this off with a link to this video here, which introduces this sheet, and then I'll be posting it online today. I'll be back every Sunday, nine o'clock British time. If you've any questions, you can come and ask me live. You can always post questions on the videos on YouTube, and you can also ask questions in the Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching. Hope you have a great Sunday. It's really sunny here. It's beginning to feel like spring, which is just great, especially after this winter. Take care. Bye for now.